Yeah. He was all right. He was nice. The weather was kind of crazy, right? You know, the weather was bipolar, hot and cold. Didn't know what it was. Wow. Really. Yeah. been all snow instead of that sweet, nice, and it felt great. Two and a half hours in that driveway. Well, he's in good shape, though. <laughs> oh. Thanks for the update. <laughs> um, I have a few announcements. Um, Susie Herzberg uh, had surgery on February 23rd. Uh, they put a shunt in her head to drain out excess fluid. Things seem to be okay. She's aware and conscious about all that has all the tubes and connected to her, so she's going well. Uh, there's no bell choir rehearsal on Tuesday due to Bob Jones having surgery on Monday, and we pray that his surgery goes well. Thanks, Dwayne. Uh, and the fam uh, Phyllis um, Sherwood family um, at the passing of her husband, Brian, to keep them in prayer. If you open up your bulletins, please. You will see above the opening hymn, sharing of the peace. Uh, we want to share the peace. Uh, we remain in our pew to exchange the, the peace sign, you know, like Nixon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Just share the peace sign with one another. Also, if you see in the back, um, after our choir, our choral uh, benediction, you see something called Charge to the People. That is, uh, it's like an oomph to give you um, more strength and more courage, more faith to go out into the world. That comes from uh, this far by faith. It is the African American Lutheran hymnal. So that will be um, put in for us for the rest of the time. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Dawn. Um, I just wanted to give everybody an update and to say thank you for everybody who cooked for Super Bowl of uh, Caring. I know there wasn't a whole lot of us here, but I know the soup was enjoyed. We collected 322 non-perishable items for the food pantry. So thank you to each and every one of you who brought items. Thank you. Are there any other announcements that you need to make this time? Renee, are you, is Renee here? Renee, are you doing the Curie? Uh, huh? It's spoken. It's spoken. Okay. All right. Um, if there aren't any other announcements. Pastor others? Willie, just to clarify, we are having an Ash Wednesday service. Yes. Correct. Okay. I, uh, we looked at this on Tuesday and I was looking for the announcement. I, must have missed it. So there will be an Ash uh, Wednesday service, 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. on Wednesday. Following that, the following Wednesday, the Inside Out program mm -hmm. that Pastor Woody has been announcing will take that spot. But the traditional Ash Wednesday service uh, will be at 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. I would like to tell you a joke about Ash Wednesday, but I don't want to put Kim out there. She thought the Ashes were actually humans, so. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, let us uh, prepare our hearts for worship and please rise. Oh. We need a shade up there. <laughs> so blind, so blind, so tear. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you call us to welcome. 
accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of the eternal life. Live free, live, live is free and forgiven children of God. Amen. The peace will be with you always. And also with you. Turn around to your pizza. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and I open it him.
living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. May be seated. The first reading is from Exodus. Moses' face, face shone with the reflected glory of God after he received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. The sight caused the Israelites to be afraid, so Moses wore a veil to mask the radiance of God's glory, taking it off when he spoke directly with God. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain, with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him. And Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord, uh, our psalm today is 99, we'll read it responsibly. <clears throat> the Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord, great in Zion, is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name, which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. The mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity, and you have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord, and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron, and Samuel among those who call upon your name. O Lord, they called upon you, and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept your testimonies and the decree that you gave them. Lord, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill. For the Lord our God is the Holy One. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. In his debates with the Corinthians, Paul contrasts the glory of Moses with the glory of Christ. The Israelites could not see Moses' face because of the veil. But in Christ we see the unveiled glory of God and are transformed into Christ's likeness. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. 
Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which was he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, is it good for us to be us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came over uh, overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then, a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him. It convulses him until he foams out of the mouth. It mauls him, and it will scarcely leave him alone. I beg your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, "You faithless and per a perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here." While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. He's casting out 
demons. He's having conversations with his disciples, asking them, who do people say who I am? They say, oh, you're Elijah or John the Baptist. So while he's in the valley, these confusion things are going on. The valley always represents confusion. It represents something that is off-put. So in the valley, Jesus is doing all these things. Now it comes time for the mountaintop experience. Now the mountaintop experience, if you read scripture, which I know all of you do every single day of your life. Right? Right. Um, whatever you read about the mountaintop experience, whether it's Moses or Elijah, this is the place where humanity meets God. Not face to face, because we're, the face of God is too strong. Actually, in the Hebrew, it's supposed to be Moses looking at the backside of the God. The backside? What's the backside? <laughs> Two cheeks that we have, right? <laughs> it's kind of funny, right? That's the only way he's going to look at God, was to look at God's two cheeks. But in this mountaintop experience, there is a decree that goes out, there is a glory that happens, and this mountaintop experience cannot be the only experience that those who are there can experience. They cannot stay out in the mountaintop. They have to go back down to the valley. So here Jesus is up on the mountain and he brings his three friends with him and they fall asleep. There's something about the disciples, I don't know if they take time on the piano, but they always sleep it whenever things are going the way they should. They should be praying and consecrating, all this kind of stuff. No, they are sleeping. But the glory, oh, not that, not serious. The glory of God transforms whoever is at the mountaintop. As you see, the face is shone and shining, and the clothes are so dazzling white. And who appears at this mountaintop? Moses and Elijah. In the book of Luke, Luke is the only gospel that tells us what the conversation between Moses and Elijah and Jesus was. was. And that was about his departure, about his crucifixion, what he had to do when he goes back down into the valley. Now, it's interesting that Moses and Elijah was there. Who was Moses? He led the people out of Exodus, right? They were in the wilderness for 40 years. They only had to go about maybe 150 miles, and they were in going around in the wilderness 40 years. Can you imagine that? They could have been in Canaan maybe two months later. No, 40 years they had to wander because of the people's stiff neck. They had Elijah, great prophet, going against the kings that were oppressing the people. And these two saints here, they represent something. Moses represents the Mosaic law. Elijah represents the prophets. In scripture and gospels, Jesus talks about, I have come to fulfill the law and the Psalms and the prophets. So this is Jesus at this moment Fulfilling that prophecy. <clears throat> to fulfill the law and the prophets. Now Peter, we're studying Peter in our Sunday school. Peter is a very interesting character. He's very sure of himself. He speaks before he thinks. As you see here, Lord, let us do three dwellings for you, Moses, and Elijah. Meaning, Peter wanted to stay at the mountaintop. He did not want to come down. Who does? Who wants to leave the glory of God when it's right in front of you? 
Because you know when you go back down to the base of the mountain, there's going to be nothing but chaos. So why not stay at the mountaintop? No, you can't stay at the mountaintop. There's work to be done in the valley. His face shining, his clothes white. This is the image of God's glory. This is the image of what God's power looks like. It is pure, it is bright, it is something to be amazed at, astonished at, at times, sometimes to fear at. But Jesus knew that he could not stay at the mountaintop. That work had to be done in the valley. But in this time on the mountaintop, there's something that's very interesting. The voice says, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. What are we supposed to listen to? How are we supposed to listen? What does listening lead us to? Could you imagine if we always listen to Jesus, we would not be in the predicaments that we are in in the valley. There would be no confusion in the valley. There would be no wars in the valley. There would be no separation in the valley. There would be no poverty in the valley. There would be no depression or anxiety in the valley. If we would just listen to God. But God knows that we are hard at listening. We are hard-headed people. Very hard-headed. You guys always listen to your parents? No? no? Did your kids always listen to you? No, right? That frustrates you, right? Gets you kind of angry. You gotta mind me. But to listen to God, to listen to the love and mercy that Jesus Christ talks about and lives out is the example that we ought to follow. While Moses and Elijah was talking to Jesus about his departure, Jesus could have said, oh, I, I didn't come here for that. That's not why I'm here. I just want to see what earth was like. No, he had to listen to his father. He had to listen to the words that his father was telling him. That you have to go to Jerusalem, and you have to suffer, and you have to die. Who wants to hear that news? No one wants to hear the news of suffering. Because on the mountaintop, there is no suffering. But in the valley, oh, there's suffering. Now they go back down the mountain the next day, right? And what happens? A huge crowd is there, and there's a man saying, Teacher, listen, come. My son is possessed, and he is my only child. I don't know how many people here are only children or you only have one child, but that's a desperate need when you only have one child. You are desperate at this moment. You probably tried everything you could to help your son and nothing was working. You see, sometimes in the valley, we go to other avenues to get help. And it doesn't work. It doesn't help us. You know, the self-workbooks the self workbooks at Barnes & Noble, that is a huge section. There are so many people who have books out there trying to tell you how to get your life together and how to get your life right. But this man, in his desperate state, said, I'm going to go and try Jesus. Because I tried everything in my power, everything my finances could do, everything, and nothing worked. There has to be a bomb in Gilead. There has to be refuge in Jesus. Now, this is an interesting thing. You don't really see this in the gospel, but Jesus gets really mad. And why did he get mad? Because his disciples could not cast out the demon. Even though he gave his disciples authority to do so, they couldn't do it. And what does Jesus say? You faithless 
and perverted generation, how much do I have to bear with you? Can you imagine? I would love to see you his face when he said this, because I'd probably like bust out laughing with his face is already shining and he's mad. But the human side of Jesus is coming out. We cannot forget that that Jesus is also human. He gets frustrated. He says one thing and we do the other. He tells disciples, focus on this, they focus on, am I the greatest? You see, in the valley, we need to focus. In the valley, we need to have courage of the power that God gives us to do things in ministry. We cannot be deterred from our own weaknesses because our weaknesses will stop us from doing what God has called us to do. But we find strength in Jesus Christ. We find strength in listening to him. We find strength in studying the scriptures. We find strength in prayer. And we can find strength in one another. The God that lives in me also lives in you. God works that way. We are his vessel in the valley. We are the ones that are called to make God's path straight in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. He's talking to us. Meaning there's work that we have to do to prepare the way in this valley. There's work that we need to do. Whether it be justice. Whether it be helping people. Addressing the illnesses that people have, looking for more cures, looking for ways that people cannot be homeless, looking for ways for people to have strength in their own self. The valley is where our faith hits the road. You see, the mountaintop experience is supposed to energize us. It's supposed to energize us. You ever see the Energizer Bunny, right? You see that? Uh, 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 yeah, that you know it's doing the boom, boom, yeah, the Energizer Bunny, there. That's Jesus, that's Jesus doing for us. Energize us. Give us his glory so we may walk in the deep of the valley. This is needed. This is our calling. That the Lord that had been transfigured comes to us and transforms us into his likeness so we may have straight paths in the valley. So all may know who Christ is. I don't know all the things that it's going to take us to be energized, but I know this, that we should be open to God's glory. We should welcome the glory of God when he comes to us. It may come to us in ways that we don't think is going to work. Or it may come in ways we think we can't do. But everything that Christ calls us to do will be accomplished some way, somehow. Because God's word is what we stand on. We stand on the word of God and it does not come back void. At times in the valley, we may feel as if we are not making headway. It may feel that way at times. We may take a step and have to take two steps back. But the glory of God will guide our steps to the righteousness of the cross, and the cross is our refuge. Yea, we may suffer, but at the end, we will see the glory of God and the dazzling white robes and the shining face. We all come to God's temple in heaven. We will have those white robes. We will see the face of God, not his cheeks. We will be in the glory of God. And may we bring the mountaintop experience down to the valley so all may know that God's face shines upon us. Amen.
make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanish in despair. And God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountain and the valley sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, cannons <coughs> carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons where uninterrupted views, and sand shaped by ocean's tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish inequity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits, and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound of conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. Your good God of grace. Here are you. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached their limits of treatment. Give com compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Today we shout hallelujah from the mountaintop. This week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in the worship during this change of seasons. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to our worship life. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Bless as blessed are those who listen to Christ's voice in, the, in this life and now rest with you. Transform us from glory into glory. To give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Since we have such great hopes in, prom in your promises, O oh God, we lift these are all our prayers to you in the confidence of faith and faith through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. Blessing for the offering. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table, nourish us with the heavenly food, and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You see the blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in, in knowledge and love of God. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of the Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thanks be to God.